This will be my first project using 18650 lithium ion cells. I'm going to build a portable battery inside this ammo can. So here we go. Now I've been breaking these 18650s out of modem packs for the last two weeks and testing their capacity. I have not had a single one that came out of the modem pack at less than 2.7 volts. And they all tested really well. Now here's the ammo can. And here's the two ports. They came with the kind of thumb screw facing in. And I was swapping it around uh, like this. Now these 18650s, I could put them in as two stacks. So I could stack one on top of the other like this and put it in as two stacks, or I could do it sideways, or maybe even uh, three rows like this, going back. Uh, I mapped it out a couple of different ways, and the way that I think I'm gonna do it is actually with two rows like this. All right, so what this will do is give me a 12P, and I'm gonna do a 14S. So what that means is 12 cells will all be paralleled, so they'll act like one giant cell, and then I'm going to series connect positive to negative, 14 in a row, which will get me up to 48 volts. 12P, 14S, we need 168 cells. So I've gotta pull out 168 of my best cells. I have 200 total. Now I asked for 200 from battery hookup because I was expecting some of these to turn out bad, but none of them actually turned out bad for me. And I'm going to start off by just separating out uh, all the red ones. I think these might be Sanyo brand. I'm not 100% sure on that though, because they don't say Sanyo on here. Uh, whereas the other ones that are blue say LG, and the green ones say Samsung on them. So let's see if we have enough just in blue and green. I watch HB Powerwall, his videos, and uh, he has had bad luck with Sanyo's, so I figure if I have the option to do it all in LG and Samsung, let me try. But I'm not opposed to tossing in some red ones if I need to. They just seem to be the minority of my cells. Alright, I think I got all the red ones out. So right here are all the cells that I need to create the battery. These are the spares that I have of the green ones. So I've got some cell holders here. There's these little dovetail clips built into them. Eleven, twelve, up to here, but I don't need it to actually go beyond that. I can actually cut this off. I wonder if I can just snip it for now, just to move on. Yeah, okay, so I can just snip these for now and worry about the uh, cleaning up the edges later. There we go. So now I've got seven by 12 plus little halves. I'm gonna probably run this through the bandsaw to clean it up. Here are the cell holders. They're currently seven tall and 12 wide, and they fit in here great. So they fit right in the box. There's gonna be two rows, and the front here where you have these uh, positive negative ports, there's clearance for them. So it looks like everything should fit in here really well. There's enough height that you could actually go eight tall if you wanted to. There's enough extra room. So somebody like my friend Ben, who does 16S for his system, he could do the same type of thing, just go eight tall, and it would work. So I guess I'll just go through here and start lining up all the... I did not re-sleeve most of these cells. Sometimes I just simply took uh, black tape 
Oh, actually, I just realized I'm putting these on wrong. Okay, what do I need to do? I need to flip them and go every other. Yeah, like this. Because these are going to be my parallel rows going this way. These ones go in the same orientation. There we go. Now, part of that is because these cells really are just, uh, they're new old stocks, so they're pretty good cells to begin with. While I'm lining these up, I'll go ahead and throw in some footage of how I broke down these cells so you can see uh, that process. Uh, and this one, I left a little nickel strip there. I'm gonna take that off. So I didn't do a very good job on some of these, but here's how I broke them apart. I have to make sure that I've got all of them in the right orientation. So negatives across the line here, and then positives across the line. So just gotta make sure that all of this, I didn't screw any of them up. Let's see here. So this is gonna go on like this. And this one. Go on like this. Good, so that wasn't too hard. All right, so this is the spot welder. I bought this from Keith. Keith has a business called 18650, and he is down in Rhode Island. I actually drove down there and bought this from him, but you can check out his website. I'll leave a link below. That's where I bought this. This is nickel fuse strip from battery hookup. Wow, look at that, that's so cool.
this guy here, I've got to flip it over and I have to do the opposite. <laughs> the opposite runs. I have to flip it over and I have to do the opposite runs. So right here is going to be the opposite side. Now I can go through and do these ones. Okay, so I'll just keep going like that and tape them off as I go. Uh, so this is the BMS I'm using. It's a DALI. It's a 60 amp discharge and 50 amp charge. And then it comes with this wiring harness, which has very long leads on it. Nothing wrong with making your BMSs bigger than the way that you're going to size the capacity. Uh, these uh, BMSs, you don't want to blow the MOSFETs out. So always make them bigger than what you need. Uh, the other thing that I want to uh, plug into this, since there's no monitor on here, I'd like to be able to periodically check the cells if I need to. So I have this uh, ISDT cell checker. I use it on checking all my batteries. The connection on here is a, a JST-XH. That's what these connectors are. So I'd like to put uh, one wiring harness on each. That way I could manually open the lid, uh, plug this in, check what the cell voltages are doing, see how unbalanced they are. Uh, that's just for fun. So totally not a requirement, just fun. Like that, you can see there's one line of cells here that isn't connected to anything. This one right here. And because that's the flat side, I know those are negative cells. So this is going to be the main negative of the entire pack. And then over here on this side, we have the main positive of the whole pack. You can kind of see how those are positive cells. So the main negative is going to be number one. So I'm going to uh, label that. Uh, one. And then over here on this side, it's going to be two, three, four. So those are my eight wires for the seven S. Now this one is going to be connected on the other side, right here, for the, for the positive. So this one's not going to get one. And then we have over here, this is going to be number 9, 10. Okay, so that's how I'm going to make my connections for this guy, the main negative over here, which is the red one. I'm, so here's the main negative of the whole pack, and you can see that corresponds with how this plugs in, plugs in this direction, and there's a little negative symbol and positive symbol. Alright, so I'm just cutting open a little section of tape right here, that way I can solder the wires to that, those little spots. Two, three, four. Here's number four. Number one, two, three, Green is four. Okay. Four. I finished the soldering of these wires, the ones that at least I could do right now. So I have two JST connectors, but I still have to do the uh, connection down the middle and the two main positive and negative.
Now here's the nickel strip which is going to go right down the middle and that's going to join the two halves and then we need to fold it together. So there's two things I got to do. I have to put a crease in this nickel strip so it folds right in the middle. The other thing I want to do is take this plastic water bottle. This is just a, a Coke or Pepsi bottle and I'm going to cut it and use the plastic as the insulator between the two halves. I'll be able to put this on here like that. That's, so this is just water. go. Good. Bent there. I need to create my main negative across here. And over on this side, it's gonna be my main positive. So they need some bus bars to come off. So the battery's gonna sit in like this. So these are gonna be the positive and negative posts of the ammo can. The back side is gonna press up against the back of the ammo can. The front is where I'm gonna have like the BMS here. So it'll fit right in this area. One. All right, so for these two strips, which will turn into the main positive and negative, I only have one row to actually spot weld. So the other row can come off. But I'm going to leave little tabs of nickel, and that way I have something to kind of solder my bus bar to. I think this will work. Now I'm left with a bunch of tabs. So I've seen HB Powerwall use this method. He puts the copper wire in a drill and spin it and it becomes this nice bus bar. This is doubled up 14 gauge and what I did is I bent over all these little tabs for the nickel strip and I put some flux on there so now let's go ahead and try to solder it. OK, 
Okay, so now I've got those soldered on. Last two wires. This is the negative side, here's the negative bus bar, and it comes straight down to the BMS, which is right here. The positive side comes off the opposite corner. So hopefully by taking the negative and positive from opposite corners, that will help evenly distribute the amps across the whole pack. Now I have some of this heat shrink. All these little things I've been, I picked up from Key at 18650. I think that was pretty cool. <laughs> wow. Look at that, huh? Ha! <laughs> that is one big brick of a battery. <laughs> awesome. Some padding in this uh, bottom. Um, and so I'll probably just use a uh, prime bag here with some bubble wrap and set that in. There's plenty of room actually between the uh, studs and the battery. Probably, probably a good half an inch actually. So I'm going to be adding something to block in here. So now I've got to get the circuit breaker in here. This is a midnight solar circuit breaker. This one is a 20 amp. So this wire comes from the battery and this wire goes to the front stud. So I just need to get those screwed on there somewhere. So we're currently getting no voltage at the two outside posts. So let's flip it on. Yes, and the BMS is working because otherwise we wouldn't get any uh, voltage out. Now I have these two extra JSTs, so let's check what they are doing. Everything is 3.3 and 3.3 on this side as well. So it looks like we wired everything correctly. Now if somebody wanted to, they could put two of these monitors inside here, uh, but I'm just going to use them one time just for uh, top balancing when I bring everything up to 4.2 because the BMS is very slow at that. So these will speed that up. Uh, bring it up to 4.2 volts per cell and then have to put a discharge on it. But we currently have voltage out here at these posts, so it works. Now battery hookup 
gave me this ammo box and they had already removed this rubber gasket on the inside. They said that's important to not make it a pressurized unit. The ammo can battery is done and it was a lot of fun building it. Let's see how much it weighs. This is just my bathroom scale. It says 22.8 pounds. I'll put the numbers up on the screen of how much this would cost. I think Tom at Battery Hookup is going to be charging $29 for the ammo can painted with these studs already drilled and installed. The modem packs for this are $2.20 per pack with four cells in each and you'll need 42 packs. So the modem cells are going to be $92. Now that's before a discount, but if you want a discount, you can use my coupon code. That's David Paws, and that'll get you 10% off all your purchases at Battery Hookup. So all told, you're going to be somewhere around $190 for this package, the circuit breaker and the BMS in here. For $140 per kilowatt hour, that's a, that's a decent price. So what's a good application for this? Now these are a very good value cell. They're not necessarily the highest uh, capacity cell, but they're really good value at about 50 cents per cell. And the total package here being about $140 per kilowatt hour is really good. So if you build this, you could say build one package every time you get another 200 bucks and add to your system over time. Uh, you don't have to do it all in one big shot like I tried to do with the uh, tower of power behind the camera. Uh, now these are not very high amp cells. So if you are going to do this and you're specifically thinking of maybe like what I'm thinking of doing for a future project might be to build one of these uh, just for the purpose of powering my miter saw. And my miter saw has a really huge surge and this, these cells wouldn't do very well in that application. But Battery Hookup also sells uh, Ryobi cells, which are less capacity, but really high amp, 15 amps per cell. So you, you punch those into this assembly, and I could run my miter saw off of it uh, in short little bursts, and the cells could handle it. So that's actually a project that I'm thinking about maybe doing in the future. Let me know in the comments below if you want to see that. Thank you everybody very much for watching. I'm not testing this in this video because uh, it's really late and I've just got to get the video uh, into editing <laughs> so I can get it posted. Uh, but I will make a future video where I, uh, after I get this fully charged and we'll do a capacity test on it and we'll ch power some stuff up with my little inverter. So thanks a lot for watching. If you enjoy the video, please like, subscribe, comment, and share.